It's Terry from D-Lab. In this video, we're going to put a new filter cap in the Drake R4A receiver. This filter cap is custom made by D-Lab, easy to install, and to save you money. Here we go. So here's a little Drake R4A. Take a look at your top side. You can see it still has the original filter cap. And this receiver does have some low-level audio hum with the AF gain all the way down. Let's see if you can hear it. It's not bad, but it's there. And routinely, I like to change these caps before I start any other maintenance on the radio because you know that over time this cap has to be leaking. What I'm going to replace it with is this D-Lab homebrew capacitor that I build on the 8-pin octal sockets. Here is the pinout of that cap. So it's got the same four sections as the original C90 that's in the receiver, but it'll save you a lot of money. Here is how it's built. It has individual 100 microfarad 200 volt caps, and then there's a little 22 microfarad guy right there. You simply solder to the base of this tube socket. The hard part is, is getting this guy out because it's pretty tight underneath. But all in all, it's well worth your efforts and you'll have a much quieter receiver when you're done. Here's the bottom side of the main filter cap. These three main sections here identified with the little symbols are the 100 microfarad sections. And this one up here that's not identified is the 22 microfarad, okay? You can see there's a big old solder glob here that holds one of the tabs. This one and this one are bent over, and maybe the one under this transformer is soldered. I don't know. But we need to get that out, drill a couple little holes for the new socket to mount, and wire back up. So the first thing you should do if you're not familiar with the receiver is to make yourself a sketch so you know where these wires went on the filter cap tabs then to make it real simple take yourself some good sharp wire cutters and get in here and get underneath where the wires solder to the tabs and cut them off that. Cut them off, leave the wiring where it's at, keep them in the positions that they were in, then we'll remove the main cap. When you bring the new one in, you will have a good idea where everything was to begin with. All right, all four tabs are cut. Everything's just kind of hanging in the breeze here. Now let's get the main filter cap pulled. So the next step is to bend up these two mounting tabs here and over here. You're going to bend them vertically just like they were back in the day before the cap was installed. This third tab here that you can see, I'm going to cut that with a Dremel tool and that will relieve three of the mounting positions. Then we can rock the cap and it will break loose from the chassis and then we'll be able to install the new one. For this step, you're going to use a Dremel tool with a standard cutoff bit, okay? And you need to get right down in here and you're going to cut that tab, alright? Now I'm not actually going to show this on video because it's very tricky and i got to watch what I'm doing so I don't damage any wiring around it. I'll get that cut and then I'll show you how to remove the rest of the cap assembly. Alright, so I have the third tab cut right here. You can kind of see the evidence of that where my Dremel blade was. Some of the fallout from that blade. If I reach under here, you'll see now that the cap moves, all right? So it's only being held by one tab, which is up underneath this transformer. So I'm gonna to go top side and I'm gonna rock that cap. She'll break loose and we'll be able to put the new one in. Here's our filter cap. You can see it's nice and loose. Now, you do have to be a little bit aggressive here, okay? Probably want to remove that tube so you don't damage it, 
we're going to rock this guy back and forth. Fatigue that last little tab. I think I got it. Off she goes. So we got our hole cleared. You can see that last tab right there we broke loose. Now my new filter cap is going to mount right there. Right where the old one was. But we have to drill a couple little pilot holes for some screws. So before you drill these holes, look underneath and make sure you're not going to drill into a component or a wire. That would be a disaster. Also keep in mind the orientation of the little 22 microfarad cap. So you remember where the wire was underneath. You want that to kind of line up with the position of that wire. In this case, the cap is going to sit in here in this position. Okay, So I'm going to just take a center punch etch my little locations for these little mounting holes. We'll get those punched. And then I'll go underneath. Make sure everything's cool. Drill those. Use some sheet metal screws. And keep in mind this frame of the new socket that we're putting in has nothing to do with the grounding of the amp. You're going to run a separate ground runner from these tabs, these four tabs, to chassis. Okay, So it's not like the old original filter cap where the housing was the ground. This one has terminals that are the ground, so don't forget to hook those up. Alright, so the cap is in place and I made sure that these little self-tapping screws would not interfere with anything underneath. So as I stated earlier, this is a very tight fit. You can see that the new cap is right up against that transformer. Those are the ground leads there and there. So we need to put a ground runner first from here over to here and then we simply connect the four wires back up. So I've got a couple of the wires reconnected. The blue ones are in place. There's four red wires that go on one terminal and you can see there's some very small pigtails in here. So I actually strip these using an X-Acto knife. I just hold the wire with some long nose pliers, kind of uh, nick the insulation, pull it off, and get them in there. Remember, this is probably the last time you'll ever have to do this. So take your time, be careful. All right, mission complete, new filter cap is installed. You see here I used a new 1000 ohm resistor. There's no reason to wrestle with the old one trying to get it off those terminals. Plus it was a 10 percenter. This is a 5 percenter. Next step, let's fire it up. Make sure it doesn't go up in a ball of smoke. Obviously if you just put in your filter cap, check and double check your work. Make sure nothing is shorted. You really don't want to be disappointed after all that work. There we go. We have audio. So that means we have high voltage and I don't see any smoke. Do you? Alright so the main filter cap has been changed and obviously you see that's probably the worst one of all because it's very tight. Right? Everything in the Drakes are very tightly engineered. Over here is an 8 microfarad cap. You want to change that one too. It is known for failing. And then up here Right behind the AF gain controls, a 10 microfarad cap. You want to change that one too. No reason to get in here and put it in your main filter and not change the rest of the electrolytics because they all have the same age on them. Well, let's quickly review how the new multi section capacitor is constructed. This is the old original can type. You can see it's much larger, but the ratings on the new cap are identical. So here's what I do. I take a 8-pin octal tube socket and I drill next to where the pins are, right? So you got holes in the base. I take individual capacitors and I slide the leads through those holes, wrap them around the terminals, and solder those, okay? So we have the 300 microfarad sections and the 122, okay? Just like the original. So here is a diagram 
for your reference. Oops. There she is. So you can see the 8-pin socket. There's that 1K resistor that I showed you underneath. You can see the five red and white wires here on A. And of course you have B, C, and D. So this thing wires in just like the original. And it should be just as good and last you another 30 years. All right, that wraps up cap replacement on the Drake R4A receiver. As you can see, it's kind of a tedious job. You just got to take your time. You know, I always thought I should have been a dentist or a brain surgeon. But either way, it's fun to work on this stuff. And it looks like this one is coming to life. See you again.